Why is it in a cage? Because it growled at me. Yeah, it's definitely growling at you, buddy. The paint, though, not the glass. The paint is actually what's growling at you. Why, you may ask? Probably because that's radium paint. What is radium? Well, radium is calcium's screamingly radioactive heavy cousin. It is the last in the series of the alkali earth metals. And probably the most interesting thing about it is the fact that it's really radioactive. Radium comes from the decay of uranium and thorium, which are both also radioactive, but less radioactive than radium. And radium has a fairly long half-life, not as long as uranium or thorium, but long enough that it can accumulate in ores that contain uranium, like uranite. It was the accumulation of the radium in these ores that allowed Marie Curie and her husband to figure out at first that, wait, there's something that doesn't add up here. Uranium ore emits X amount of radiation, but uranium metal emits like a tenth of X. What's going on here? This doesn't make sense. Well, they figured it was because there was another element in this ore. And after doing some testing and buying about 100 kilograms of it themselves and extracting it, they were able to isolate this other compound that was really radioactive, like way more radioactive than uranium was. And they called it radium. Now, around that same time, 1898, we were still kind of figuring out what radiation even was. It wasn't fully understood how good or bad it was, what kinds of effects it had. We didn't necessarily know a lot about it. And this led to some very useful applications and some very unfortunate applications. One of the fortunate applications of it was in the use for treating cancer. We didn't necessarily know exactly how radiotherapy worked to cure cancer, but we knew that it did work and we knew that radium was really radioactive. So we got to work using it. We don't use it really much anymore, except I think maybe in a few specific niche situations, but for a time it was kind of a gold standard. This use in the treatment of cancer, as well as a general lack of understanding of radiation and the harms associated with it, also kind of led to the birth of a whole quackery institute for radium. People were going crazy for this stuff. You saw Radithor, radium water, radium toothpaste, radium razors. People would just say it had radium in it because people wanted radium. It was the new cool it hip thing, except it was really toxic. And we figured out that it was really toxic, unfortunately, through what are commonly known as the radium girl trials. So one of the other uses of radium is in making luminescent paint. And the way this works is the radium itself doesn't glow really, but it releases this radiation, this radioactive energy. And that energy can be picked up by other things. And if you mix the radium with this stuff called zinc sulfide and a little bit of silver, it will pick up that energy that the radium is emitting by a radioactive decay and it will glow. And that's what you see in these glowing luminescent paints, like the one in the stitch. Now, paint that glows on its own is probably very useful in observation, right? It glows in the dark, you use it on dials, ship fixtures, watches, clocks, but it's also really, really, really toxic. So remember how earlier I said radium is like calcium's cousin? That's because your body treats radium like it's calcium. So if you ingest radium, your body is going to excrete a whole chunk of it. You might just poop it out, but a decent amount of it is going to get absorbed into your bones. And that's where the really unfun party happens. This is not a Papa's party. So once that radium gets into your body and your body treats it like calcium, your body says, hey, calcium, go into the bones. And the radium's like, okay. And then it gets into your bones and it's like, haha, I'm not radium anymore because it does the radioactive decay thing. And when it spits out that radioactivity, it actually turns into another element. This element it turns into is radon which is actually even more radioactive and more unstable than radium. So now this radon is going to release a whole bunch more radioactive energy into your bones. And that energy will go on to cause cell mutations and death and the like. But once it does this, it turns into another element. And it has to do this in a bunch of different ways to become the most stable element it can, which is lead. Now, fortunately, this doesn't really happen to people anymore, but the Radium Girls, well, that was very much a tragic story. 
as you might imagine, luminescent paint has to be applied to things. They were instructing the women who worked in these factories painting these watch faces to lick the tips of the brushes before dipping it into the paint to give it a nice sharp tip and then paint the watch faces. This led to them ingesting insane amounts of radium and subsequently suffering from extreme radiation sickness and radium poisoning. Radium jaw is what happens when you get exposed to a large amount of radium. Once it became apparent that these women were dying from exposure to radium in these factories, measures were taken. And this was actually one of the earliest examples of occupational safety laws being put into place. Once they stopped licking the brush tips and they were given some basic PPE, the only people that seemed to suffer from this radium necrosis and the worst cases of a radium jaw were the people still taking those quack medicines I told you about. But eventually, especially because of how apparent and deleterious the effects of radium are to the body, those went away pretty quickly. Thankfully, we don't really need to use radium for much anymore. A lot of the things that we did use it for, we found significantly safer alternatives to. And at this point, it's mostly just used for like its special niche chemistry and some physics properties that it has. Yeah, the radium girls, at it's a really sad and tragic story, actually. Very avoidable and largely just a product of a company trying to save a few bucks. But yeah, if you enjoyed this, I appreciate if you hit that like button. Until next time, it's Kim Thug.